Welcome to the Life's Best Medicine podcast, where we are finding hope and healing one episode at a time. No appointment needed, no rubber gloves, and no coping. Just a healthy dose of life lessons to help equip you for this wild journey we call life. Hey everyone, this is a friendly reminder that we are here for entertainment purposes only. We may not even be that entertaining at times, but this is not medical advice. You know, talk to your doctor, check with your healthcare professionals uh, before making any lifestyle changes or, you know, medicine changes. What we're talking about is our clinical experience and what we've seen. And so if you really want our advice, you can consult us. You can actually consult me as a doctor, or you can consult my guest and, uh, and get all your questions answered, but we can't give free medical advice because we can't pay our bills with that, but we can help to educate you a bit and allow you to think a little bit and always reach out to your medical professional before making any lifestyle changes. Thank you. Hey everyone, believe it or not, we are in November. Holy cow. It seems like this happens every year and we, every year it just sneaks up on us. So this is the landmine time. This is where We try to just, you know, maintain not to go out of control, you know, Thanksgiving, Christmas, all these things are coming up in the near future, you know, family visiting and vacations and all that kind of stuff. So now's the time to really, really watch it, you know, use tools if you need to, you know, like Health Code, who sponsors this podcast. They have great recipes online for pumpkin spice and, you know, all kinds of things you can make pudding or, or um, ice cream or, or things like that. Because when everyone else is having their sweets, like it's it's really hard to stay strong. So look at those things. Go look, check out all their recipes. Um, health code, get health, G-T-H-L-T-H dot com. Uh, we have a discount code with them, MedHealth, M E T. H-E-A-L-T-H for metabolic health. Uh, It's really important right now during the holidays as you enjoy family, you know, don't make it all about the food, make it around the the family and and your connections, friends, you know, spending time, all the important stuff. So allow them to help you with, with some tools. Also use your keto mojo, you know, being able to track your ketones, see if you're staying on track, track your sugars, which are really important this time of year. And uh, so I just want to thank them both, uh, keto-mojo.com, for another year of sponsorship and and keeping this podcast going. Also, I'll give a plug for myself, Arizona Metabolic Health, arizonametabolichealth.com. We can help you. You know, we're doing consults. We're doing, uh, you know, short-term follow-up or follow-up forever. But uh, I'm doing all online, you know, so if you want to talk and uh, get your metabolic health squared away, laboratories, things like that, please reach out to us at ArizonaMetabolicHealth.com. And thank you again for listening. And, uh, you know, stay the course during the holidays. You got this. Keep fighting on and uh, stay well. Hello and welcome back to the Life's Best Medicine podcast. Today I have a good one. I have someone who, like, you know, I think we'll complement each other. I think we'll we'll learn from each other. And uh, selfishly, I love to learn more about his area of medicine. Reed Davis, welcome, welcome. I know you have a background in environmental law, like trying to 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 save the planet, and then you you transition over to saving people, which you know destroys the planet because more of us. The longer we survive, the more we do carbon emissions and all that kind of stuff. But hey, welcome. It's so good to have you. Thanks, Doc. It's great to be here. Hope we can, again, share share some information that is helpful for people. Yeah, I think it's really helpful. I mean, your, your area of looking at hormones, looking at stress, look at, this is something that, you know, 18 years of my career, I never really considered. Now the last five years or so, I started looking and saying, oh my gosh, like this is, how do we not, it's like a the elephant in the room that people don't mm-hmm. talk about. So Tell people your transition of doing environmental stuff to transitioning over to saying, hey, this this medical system is broken. We got to help people that are just sent from doctor to doctor to doctor. And one of the things you say that I like, too, is that, you know, we're treating numbers. We just look at the number. We're treating paper and go, oh, look, it looks better on paper. The patient feels like garbage, but they go, oh, your, your thyroid numbers look better. But, yeah, I feel terrible still. Yeah, great point. You know, I went from environmental law and saving the planet, you know, in Southern California, uh, very proactive in those kind of activities. And I was enjoying myself, but I started to get worried about people because I saw what the environment was doing to the 
again, birds, trees, air, water, bees. And I thought, what about people, including me? Now, I didn't have any health problems, but I didn't want any sneaking up on me. So I, and I was at my son's chiropractor's office and I, I asked her for a job. I said, Hey, I, I, I want to work in this field now. So I did, I changed careers in 1999 and it just opened up a whole new world for me. The training that I got, the exposure to people's problems and what was very frustrating. You know, you and I both live in Southern California. You, you know how beautiful it is. And my hobby is riding motorcycles and, and landscaping. So, you know, I was working there for just a couple of weeks, getting my bearings and thing, talking to some of the patients. And I was out riding my bike one day and I was thinking, man, these people are all caught in a cycle of trial and error. What, what every single person told me, uh, they were coming in for alternative care because the standard medicine had somehow failed to solve their problems. And at first I was totally down with them. Like they, the, you know, Western medicine doesn't work. It's wrong. But that's not the truth. The, the truth is these people had their ladders against the wrong wall. They were looking for modern medicine to solve their chronic downward spiraling degenerative conditions. And that's not what medicine, that standard medicine is for. Standard medicine is for acute care and heroic things. And, you know, if you got a disease process that's very contracted, well, you need to see a physician to save your life. Now, these people had very protracted long-term problems, which is where lifestyle medicine comes in. So most of the people actually had lived themselves into their problems, and we had to teach them how to live themselves out of those problems. Well, how do you do that? So I started running labs. I became the lab expert. Just, just I ran thousands of labs on thousands of people, and I had great mentorship, of course. Uh, some real pioneers, doctors back in the day. Uh, but I made my own observations too. I was, because I was face to face with people in the clinic for 10 years. And boy, you better learn something. <laughs> you know, I had, uh, uh, when I first started, a, uh, a lot to learn, but I didn't have anything to unlearn. So I hadn't been indoctrinated in Western medicine. I've never really been to the doctor back then, except for some sports injuries and some dental work. And so, so I, I was just all about discovery. And fortunately, I, I had a really busy practice there. I was actually did a lot of the marketing that I did public speaking and engagement, you know, outside the office and uh, through screening, health screenings and things. So I got a lot of people in there look with their eyes wide open and willing to invest in the lab work and follow the protocols. And which, again, over a 10-year period, you, you learn a few things. So I it recognized these patterns and uh, started to really capitalize on those with every single person. And then finally, uh, in 2008, I was encouraged to start teaching. And I was resistant. At first, hey, I said, I only do this because I want to be the best clinic in Southern California and have my own practice elevated. And... Um, but I was convinced finally that, you know, Reed, you could help a lot more people if you would teach others what you're doing that's been so successful. And that really, that rang true. To this day, I just teach. I teach other practitioners how to use the lab work to develop natural protocols that puts the people in charge of their own health. So that's a little bit about the background and the philosophy. And it, it's been an exciting, exciting uh, journey and fun. I don't think I really work. I think I just enjoy it. You know, yeah, I kind of feel the same fun. way now. I mean, I worked hard at my old practice. I still work hours. I'm still work, but I love what I do and we have fun and we laugh and people are coming in, they're feeling great again and they're saying, look, yeah. look, I'm losing weight. My meds are better. I mean, you know, they're coming off meds. They don't need it anymore. And, and that's fun. But the problem is yeah. a lot of people are coming to me and they're on 23 medicines, 18 medicines. And you're like, what the heck is it like? What's happening here? Like, all these medicines are treating the side effect of the first medicine that you don't even need anymore. And the other thing, and I'm sure you see that is a lot of patients will come to us and, you know, their primary puts in the chart, not their, their uh, non-compliant, their non-compliant is like, no, you gave them crappy advice. You're telling them to eat this ADA diet and their sugars are going crazy. And you say they're non-compliant. They're doing exactly what you told them and it's not working, but, but we always assume that they're not listening to us and that's why they're getting worse. Yeah. Well, the people coming in the office were exactly 
like that they didn't want to see their regular their regular doctor they said all they do is prescribe medication well that's how that system works and it's okay it, for some people they need that stuff and uh they, they need intervention to get them it's like a life preserver if you're drowning in a pool you've got to get the life preserver on you got to get over to the side of the pool then you're in our backyard so we don't do heroic care what you know if you get a gunshot wound you know you go see a doctor. yeah if you, if you get a bowl of virus you know you don't call your nutritionist or or health coach you go you go get the urgent care that you need but once you're out of the woods then you need to start taking care of yourself so that's what we teach it's how to do that part so really the two should work really well together dr bright and and they do when you have an educated physician like yourself who's who's open to um, hey, these people need more than what than just drugs and surgery. You know, they need more than that. And and I recognize that real early when people are coming in the office and real regular, like they had uh, we had chiropractic and acupuncture and massage, and you know, I became the the nutritionist and um I took a lot of other certifications and courses and things, but what I was telling people even back then was, you know, Mrs. Smith coming in the office is great and you're getting your treatments and I'm glad you're feeling better, but it's what you do at home that matters. So I started developing a program uh, to send them home with, and it now has become this huge, huge, like almost guaranteed protocol, D-R-E-S-S, that's dress. And it's it's been so successful. We were granted a trademark by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office, dress for health success. And that's diet, rest, exercise, stress reduction, and supplementation. Now, there's a mouthful, and we could spend an episode on each one individually. But I could only uh, sort of recommend a, a very customized individual dress for health success program. Once I'd done the lab work, so I was learning from these these pioneers and then applying it in the office. So again, I would add my own observations and you know what's really happening uh, right on the in the street, so to speak. So the what I looked for was hormone, immune, digestion, detoxification, energy production, and nervous system. That's the lab work I ran. So that's a lot of lab work. Uh, it's really simple. Most of them are at home test kits, so it's it's kind of cheap. And but you know you got to look at the so that spells hidden it, hormone, immune, digestion, detoxification, energy production, nervous system. And there's there's labs and and observations to make in those areas. Uh, and then once you assess a person in all those areas, what you've done, and you'll love this, Doctor Bryce, you've now identified all this whole constellation of healing opportunities. Now, these are not medical diagnoses. People had enough of those, and they're on the pills for each one. You know, and you see one guy for, for an endocrine problem, you see another person for a whatever it might, gastrointestinal, all these different. So you got five different doctors, each one treating one thing. That doesn't work. Well, it, it not as well as looking at the whole constellation all at once with H I D D E N. There's other things to look at. Uh, but then applying the principles of health building embodied in that dress for health success. And people started to really understand that they should be in control, that they are the ones who put the food in their mouth. Nobody else is putting that food in your mouth. <laughs> no one's telling you what time to go to bed unless you're a kid and it should be early. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and there's data on all this stuff. You know, I've been looking at data that, you know, I was looking at the effects of stress and sleep deprivation because they all, you, you know, like like what you're talking about. I'm seeing the same things like, you know, I just had a conversation with someone yesterday. They get stressed. They drink at night. They don't sleep. They get more stressed. They don't. Then they, they drink more at night. Then, you know, they get into the cycles like you got to break that cycle. They're, we got to fix yes. this. How do we let's step back? Why are you drinking so much? Right. Why are you stressed so much? And you start looking at how they're so interrelated because any of us know if we're not if we don't if we sleep four hours last night, we're going to be grumpy today. You know, you're going to be not wanting to deal with people. And that's just physiologic. And even studies showing if you're sleeping four hours a night and you're eating a thousand calories a day, a majority of your weight loss, if you're sleep deprived, is muscle mass. You don't want to do that. 
if you're sleeping eight hours, the same person, they were losing majority fat mass when they were eating a thousand calories, even though they're doing the same thing. So you start realizing, yeah, sleep matters, you know, stress matters, you know, the gut microbiome matters, all these things. And you think it, it, it going back to alcohol, you go, okay, if you're drinking every day, uh, then you're killing off a lot of your good, healthy gut microbiome. That's going to cause all kinds of other uh, dynamics. And that's what's interesting, talking to people who are experts in the microbiome, talk about how the stress just knocks out the gut microbiome too. And it decreases blood flow to the gut and you start getting more gut foot problems. And, uh, you know, it's just amazing how these things, I was looking on the other side of the colon. I never looked at, at, you know, inside, but how much of an effect that has on immune function. I would love to hear your take on all that stuff. Sure. Well, well, generally, overall, yeah, you made some very wise comments there. Um, you know, lifestyle medicine that we're calling it now, it really requires a look at all of those things. But without a system, what I found is that the people coming in our office were kind of lost. Um, yeah, you need to cut out the alcohol. These people are self-medicating. So they're coming into you, Dr. Bry, and they're 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 self-medicating. They're doing a lot of coffee in the morning. They're doing the alcohol at night and whatever else they're doing uh, in between, <laughs> et cetera, weekends, mm -hmm. whatever. So they're self-medicating because they don't feel the way they used to feel. So they, they reach for it. We're kind of taught to reach, oh, grab this, grab that. That's how modern medicine works. It's take this for that. And so I I learned originally a system of, of nutrition. I'm a clinical nutritional therapist. What does that mean? Well, that's just an old certificate. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, I got trained in how to apply supplements to use them instead of drugs. And that's probably better. It's probably a little safer, probably a little healthier. Maybe it puts you in a little bit more control, but it's not the. It's still not enough of a comprehensive or holistic approach. So, so all those things you mentioned are good. Um, I systematized it. That's the only difference is I systematized it because I wanted it to be a, it to be repeatable. I wanted to make sure that I was the last person people needed to see. Now, that sounds crazy from someone who was from environmental law, saving the planet. Well, I'm going to start saving people. And, and the first few coming in, maybe two weeks I was there, I just started interviewing every person. And they're all caught in that cycle of trial and error. They're really putting their health in someone else's hands. I was frustrated. I mean, you spent how much on eight practitioners? You've already spent 10 grand. And I thought that was a ripoff. So I'm feeling bad. And, and again, I'm out of my motorcycle one day, just thinking, you know what? I'm going to be the last person that that lady needs to see. I don't know how, but it, that never stopped me before. I know that I, you know, if you apply yourself, you can do some good things. And I, I'm a very good researcher. Um, you know, I, from law, law is very difficult. Uh, and and medicine is actually almost easier in a way. The human body, it's anatomy, biology, and physiology, and um, and some biochemistry. It's kind of that simple in a way to start looking at well, well, what's really wrong with Mrs. Smith? Is it just her thyroid, like her doctor says, is or is it irritable bowel, like the other doctor said, or is it low testosterone, like it's still another doctor said, or is it sort of all of these different things? behind the scenes so i got really good at you know looking under the hood i ran the labs i thank god i had uh people in in poway you know poway it's where i was uh, for 20 years you know and and uh people were willing to to spend a few bucks on themselves uh to find out and thank goodness because they helped me discover this pattern again h-i-d-d-e-n there's other things to test. Like we, we look at oxidative stress and we look at other things. But that pattern, H-I-D-D-E-N, was common enough that everyone coming in for chronic downward spiraling stress-related conditions, man, that helped them. As long as they did what I recommend. I said, I'm going to be the last guy you need to see, but you need to follow the instructions, right? I mean, I think before we turn the rec recording on doctors' biggest frustrations, people don't do what they say. <laughs> Well, yeah, and that the doctors are giving bad advice. <clears throat> and the other thing is, you know, I see it now. There's you know these new drugs on the market, you know, for weight loss and and diabetes control, eighteen hundred bucks a month. People are like, I'll pay it, but you don't pay three hundred bucks to get a test to see if we could fix it a different way, and that we yeah. can fix it, and then you're good forever. You don't need a drug the rest of your life. It's amazing, but 
the mentality and, and, and this is what I struggled with. You know, I was working, if I knew someone was going to get diabetes, I knew we could prevent it. I knew we could like with lifestyle change, but the problem was the system's not invested in that because if the patient doesn't get diagnosed with, with diabetes, the doctor, the, the, the system gets paid less by the government for taking care of that patient. Right. Someone gets a diagnosis of diabetes. We know it's a, it's a gold mine for the system, unfortunately. Right. So there's a huge conflict of interest there where the doctor says, Oh, if they get diabetes. So, all the time now, I see these people, they're like, their A1C is 6.4, their insulin's through the roof, their thyroid's jacked up. And they go, when you get diabetes, we'll treat you. It's like, why don't you treat them and prevent it from happening? Why do you want the diagnosis? Now, when you go to get life insurance, you're, you're going to be hosed. Your, your life insurance are going to you know, quadruple over what you would pay. So it's or amazing when you denied. think about it that yeah. way. It's like, this: pre- we say preventive, but they don't do preventive medicine. Yes, yes. And, you, and you're right. When you go to buy life insurance and your blood pressure is too high, they'll raise your rates or deny you. And once you've been denied once, every other application you fill out says, have you ever been denied life insurance? Yeah, click why, you know, blah, blah, blah. So you start to think, but what you're you're talking about is the algorithm, I call it the algorithm of standard medicine. So there's these rules that they play by, standard of care, what insurance pays for, and things like that, that have nothing to do with the health of the person. It doesn't suit the need, doesn't meet the needs of the people coming in with the complaints. It meets their needs and the insurance company's needs and and all the other things. And the people kind of get lost in the shuffle. So we we were determined to end that cycle. Um, Again, with respect for what that system does well, uh, uh, the urgent thing. So that algorithm that they use does not include the the predictive markers that one would need to track and understand. So the other, I'll give you an example. Just the other day, I went to a uh, uh, my Medicare. Yeah, I'm on Medicare. I'm an old guy. So they call you and they go, "Hey, you haven't been in in a year." I go, "Yeah, because nothing's wrong with me. I feel great." No, you got to come in every year and get checked out. Okay, so I go in there. They do. They don't do any physical exams anymore. They used to poke and prod you a little bit. Now they it just is unreal. To... Read. I'll, I'll tell you, it's unreal. Please finish, but it's unreal. Like I trust me. I was seeing this going. What the heck are we doing here? Yeah, part of the Medicare exam. You don't have to do a physical. You don't have to put your stethoscope on the patient. You can leave it in your car. You don't need it that day. And all you do is say, "Hey, have you fallen down? Are you depressed? Do you not like your wife? You know, do you have a gun in your house?" It's like, what the hell does that have to do with health? Man, that is exactly what happened. I went in there and they said, can we see your insurance card? And which is your favorite pharmacy? That was their two questions. To, to, okay. I, I told them I don't have a favorite, but with the nearest ones, whatever. So then I go back and they, they did do blood pressure. And things. But here's my point. Um, they said, well, we're going to order some standard blood work, you know, the CBC, Kim panel, and you know, a few other things. I said, hey, can you check my uh, high sensitivity CRP? That's a great predictive marker for atherosclerosis and other things, you know, inflammation. But he goes, well, why? I go, because I want to see it. That's a predictive marker. That'll tell me what the future is going to look like. You know, and I kind of want to track that. He goes, well, I don't, you don't really have any symptoms. We don't, we, so their algorithm only allows for a certain uh, battery test and oh, they'd only do the extra markers. I asked them about uric acid, a couple other things I wanted that, that are long term predictive markers, and they just don't do them standard. They're not routine tests, even though well, they should be in every single person. If you want to teach them how to not get diabetes and all the other things, um, arthritis and all this stuff, you know, then well, um, why does <laughs> you well, wait you till they have symptoms and then you, can, you have to have a uh, and for Medicare, you have to have, but here's the, here's the kicker for why they dragged you in. And this is the frustrating thing in, in my old practice. What happens is this uh, on January one, all of your diagnosis codes from the, all the fast go away. I have to have you come in and put all those diagnosis codes. And then all of a sudden the system gets paid by Medicare starting it when you see that patient. So if you wait till, so what, what happened, I would do an uh, annual exam, for instance, on someone on in November. The new calendar year, they say, okay, bring him back in and as early as you can. So I'm like, they just had a physical in November. They have to come in again three months later. And they go, yeah, because you're, you have to capture all the diagnosis codes. You have to put down that they have neuropathy and diabetes and all this because it disappears. So 
And then they make sure you get all their old diagnosis. Then you have to add a couple more in so that they get paid a little bit more this year than they did last year. Otherwise, the system folds, right? So you start realizing like, oh, crud. So if someone puts out, like if you say, hey, I like to drink on the weekends, they put alcohol abuse. Now they get paid more because it's called the RAP score. It's a it's a complexity of the patient. So that was my argument when I went in. I go, look, when I resigned from the 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 HMO, the head of the HMO looked at me. He's like, Brian, he called me. He's a friend of mine. We trained together. And he goes, Brian, you're like, are you going through a midlife crisis? Why are you leaving the system? You're crazy. I know how much money you're making. I go, look, you guys are killing. Like, the reality is I had 11. I go, look, in the last six months, I've had 11 people come off insulin. Do I get paid for that? No, I get paid for an eight-minute visit or a 12-minute visit. I spend two hours with the patient. So that's two hours I'm not seeing my family at night because I'm trying to help this patient. 90% of the patients didn't really care. They go, just shoot me with insulin. I don't care because they don't know what's coming down the road. Yeah. Uh, but the people who get it, so when I left my practice and came over here, the people who get it followed me and they go, I want to be healthy. Help me. Like I'm using your expertise to help me and I'll do what you tell me to do. And it's like the people who seek you out. It's the same thing. We kind of yeah. select for people who care about their health. It's different than people who go, I just want a free ride and you know, I'll just take whatever drug I can get. And I, I don't want to change my lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. Um, most people my age, I'm 70, are on at least three medications and many are on more. And some of the later ones are for the side effects of the first one. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Make any sense to me. So I'm on zero meds and I use lifestyle medicine. I eat right. I go to bed on time. Uh, sometimes I get up too early, but um, I eat right, go to bed on time. I do exercise. I have a personal trainer I've been seeing for 14 years. And uh, as far as stress reduction goes, you know, I have a pretty big, I have 50 employees and stuff, but I'm a really good delegator and I'm willing to let them make mistakes sometimes, you know, and it costs you money, but you know what they learn and they do better later and stuff. That way I stay stress-free. I'm not taking it to bed with me. You know, I have a wife who I love and I want to just have fun after work and stuff. So I, you know what I do? I get up real early and I start and then I have most afternoons off or a big part of them, you know, so that I'm not stressed out and supplements. Oh my God. I take, take a lot. Um, matter of fact, my wife is give she gives me these shot glasses. Usually, she brings me a shot glass with four or six pills in it, you know. And I, uh, they're they're supplements. They're they're it's natural. It's vitamins, minerals, essential fatty acids, antioxidants, trace elements, phytonutrients, things that your body really requires to be healthy. And so, you know, we've studied all that, doc. And uh, you know, we we get people, the same people coming to you because they don't just want a pill or god forbid surgery there's a lot of money in that stuff i mean i think some practices they're just well let's wait until you need me to cut the parts out because that's where my bread is buttered you know it's unfortunate uh that people aren't doing enough prevention as you you called it yeah and it's you you wait till the you it, like it, it's the same ideas if you have a mechanic goes oh let's not worry about yourself we'll wait till you blow up your engine then we'll replace your engine like instead of saying let's check your oil let's check your fan belt let's check and make sure so those of it there's not like what you're kind of talking about there's no glory in that because we know what's coming down the road if we don't change the fan belt and change the oil but the patient doesn't know you know and so it's really having that education of, of not saying hey we can make a lot more money and we're really good at changing engines like no i want the the guy who says i never changed the engine we keep the engine from blowing up in the first place Right. So that's kind of yeah. what we're looking at is like, that's a, you know, that, that helps, you know, for me, if, if someone gets hospitalized, I, I've screwed up something. What happened? How do they get hospitalized? You know, as we get older, we're more likely to, but you know, we need to have an arrogance about that going, look, I want to keep you out of the hospital. <laughs> yeah. I'm in Lakeside, California. And so, you know, I, I have a pickup truck. It's a 2010 Ford F-150, you know, as common as could be, it, it's got 130,000 miles on it. It runs like a dream. And I keep it, I mean, like that, it's, that's how we're supposed to keep things. And men, they're not as good as women at, at some of this stuff. We do care. I mean, again, I've got a Ford F-150 with 130,000 miles on it. I'd never trade that thing in or get rid of, it. you know, it's just such a great workhorse. And yet, do we take care of our bodies the same way? You know, women are more inclined to, to go get their owies addressed you know well oh yeah it, us guys we'd all be dead we'd all yeah, be guess, dead because our wife goes you better go get that checked out you've been limping for six weeks you know that kind of thing the guy's yeah. like okay i guess i will you know like it's funny like there's so many guys like yeah i've been having this chest pain for a month it's like these are things or we got to address man yeah yeah, yeah. Just, 
Yeah, things go by. So um, learning to take care of your body is a, a challenge. It's hard to get the right information. If you Google your complaint, you'll get a million hits. You know, this is just an endless number of opinions out there or, you know. So what we do is um, it's, it's called evidence-based. So it's not like there's a million double-blind placebo uh, controlled randomized trials on some of what we, but there's a lot of anecdotal built up evidence and uh, over the years and uh, some tried and true sort of proven patterns. And people understand that a lot better than some trial with 50,000 people in it. You're not one of those people, you know, that's called a cohort. So are you a cohort, Mrs. Smith? No, I'm not a cohort. I'm just me, Mrs. Okay, exactly. You're a study of one. So we have everybody realize you're a study of one. You're a unique individual. There's a diet and pattern of sleep and special exercise program for you. And, you know, you've got all these various stressors. Man, we could do a whole show on stress where we separate it. Is it mental, emotional stress? Is it uh, psycho spiritual stress if you have no purpose in life that's stressful if is it trauma like me i've had motorcycle accidents and sports injuries so i've got aches and pains i have to take care of and then of course there's the chemical and biochemical stressors there's eighty thousand, they say um chemicals in the environment only a thousand have been tested for safety well we're the rest of the tests we're the rats in the maze being subjected to all this stuff oops Oops, turns out glyphosate will kill you. <laughs> you know, like, like, yeah, it, yeah. It's sold. It just, yeah, if you go down to Home Depot, it's on three different shelves, not just one. Yeah, and you're spraying so, it all over the place. Oh, what the heck? Spray it up in the air. Let's get rid of all that. And you don't realize the impact and then the physiologic impact. And like you said, it's so critical is knowing that is it emotional, spiritual, physical pain? You're not sleeping. All those things play a role. So you can't say, okay, give me a pill to fix all this stuff and your life's a disaster and you're tense and worried all day and you can't you can't concentrate. Like I love what you were saying is like all, you 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 said a couple of times you're out riding your motorcycle and get these ideas where if you just relax and get out of this, if you're in the constant rat race and and always preoccupied, you can't think of stuff and go, Oh, I'll just do it this way. So I have people if I can get them just to meditate or or just do something for five minutes and they count their blessings or have gratitude for five minutes, it changes. They go, Oh. I never thought about it this way. Oh, this is how I have to fix that problem. I've been stressed out for five years about, you know? Exactly. So our remember it's D R E S S. I said, diet rest. I didn't say sleep, even though sleep's a big part of the rest. Yes. You want to get your six and a half, seven, seven and a half hours sleep. Eight hours sleep is the most anyone really should need, except teenagers. Of course they need an extra hour of sleep every day. We know that, right? <laughs> yeah. So, so they do, they actually need more sleep. Because their bodies are so anabolic, so growing and stuff. So we've studied sleep, diet, rest. Rest, though, is sleep, yeah. But you can also rest your, your emotions and your spirit, in a sense, you know, anytime during the day. And it only takes five minutes, like you said. If you learn how to breathe, some breathing exercises, and quiet the mind, it's remarkably refreshing. And man, you can go the rest of the day. And do that instead of, what, popping a pill, drinking another coffee, or eating a donut, whatever doing. it is, right? Yeah, those things are toxic to the body. Doesn't mean I don't do them. I mean, I I had a, a drink last night. I was out with this doctor who's visiting in town. We had I had one glass of wine. That's fine. Uh, I'm not, you know, I'm not some. That's yes, what works for you, right? If you're metabolically spirit. healthy and you're taking care of yourself, the rest of them, you have a glass of wine and relax with your buddy. There's no problem in that. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. And a cup of coffee in the morning. I don't think that's a horrible thing. Uh, you know, if it's part of your routine, it keeps you stable and stuff like, but I'm not self-medicating throughout the day. And so you see people who are self-medicating, you mentioned it and well, what, what, what's the problem? Uh, da, 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 whatever it is, what's missing from my observation and practice and ex experience of it is, is a system. So we've systematized that lifestyle program. We've systematized the investigation. What are the real markers? CB, I mean, you know how many people came in and said, well, my doctor says my blood work looks normal. There's nothing wrong with me. He thinks it's all in my head. <laughs> all the time. Yeah. All that, the time. Yeah, right? So, well, we I believe you, Mrs. I, I don't think it's all in your head. I think there is something dysfunctional. 
here's some different kind of labs that we can look at the H I D D E N. And, and if you're willing to put yourself out there, you know, invest because insurance doesn't cover most of it. And that's a, that's a big problem. Um, but that system that you were in, well, my insurance will pay for this and that. Will my insurance pay for it? Sorry. <laughs> no. You know, they, their algorithm doesn't allow for what we know you need. Yeah, do. that's the hard thing because a lot of my patients are, are you know, they don't want to spend a ton of money. But you're like, let's look at the, like, okay, based on these symptoms, okay, it could be a parasite. It could be these other things that no one else is thinking about. And when we find out, oh. You have a parasite, it costs you 100 bucks or whatever, 150 bucks. I don't have any financial interest in the lab. We find yeah. out the answer, go, let's, let's, okay, now we have an idea. Let's see if this is contributing at least. Let's change the diet. Let's do different things that we can, that we can manage that problem. Um, and, and so yes, it, it is, data, it's a hard the, thing because it's, it's a hard sell to say you're going to have to pay cash to get all these labs done because they think you're making all this money off the lab testing. But that's what's giving us to say, oh, here's your, where your Christmas lights aren't working because there's one bulb. We have to figure out which bulb is burned out before we can fix the problem, right? Yeah, exactly. There, and it's usually multiple. So here's one for you. Um, everyone back in the day was looking for root cause. And now you see on the internet, root cause medicine. We do root cause. We find the root cause. It's kind of wishful thinking, in my opinion, because I searched for the root cause in thousands of cases and never found it. And, and the reason is it can be very far removed from where the, you think the problem is manifesting here with this cluster of symptoms and yet the root cause. And here's the other thing. There's always multiple root exactly. cause, or I just yeah. call them causal factors, causal factors. Well, if there's 10, here's another aspect that almost no one thinks about those causal factors are having an effect on each other. And it's not even singly measurable in many cases. It's effect the causal factors have on each other. And a recent study at, uh, from the University of California, San Diego, says that the root cause could be gone. It disappeared. So there's no root cause that you can ever find. But the downward spiral uh, the, in the metabolic processes that it created is still active. So I don't use the term root cause anymore. The term, I, I, I love searching for it. We never give up. But the real uh, message is metabolic chaos. So all these causal factors yeah. are having an effect on your body and on each other, rippling, creating metabolic chaos. And that's our one concern is how do we sort that out? How do you so bring back this homeostasis again, this balance where your hormones aren't up and down and crazy <laughs> all day, right? How do you bring that? And is part of its piece and what you're eating and what you're drinking and all these kind of things. But you're right. It's a huge, like you look and you're like, okay, it's not just going to be this one thing. It's just that you're, we fix your thyroid and then your whole life gets better when you're stress intense and hating the and world. You right? said it, you said it. Yeah. That's a classic where it sounds like thyroid. That's the sounds like method. We don't use the sound like method where I come, where I, what I develop. Yeah, Cause if you use sounds like method, you might even find something like it sounds like thyroid. Check it. Oh, yeah, I'll pat myself on the back. I found your problem. It's the thyroid. Here's your medication. You're gonna, And you might even feel a little bit better. But it, you didn't change anything. You didn't change all the causal factors. So it will either come back, you need to adjust the dosage, or new symptoms will appear. And then it's like, well, that sounds like testosterone. And they measure that and they pat themselves. Yep, I found your new problem. It's testosterone. Yeah, but you, why is it off, here, right? And here's your new thing. So, yeah. so that's just another cycle of trial and error. Test. So I have to ask you, you treat, know, just stepping treat, back for treat, a second. Treat. When you first started doing this, did you get blowback from nutritionists and dietitians? All these people, like, who the hell is this guy coming in doing something outside of the standard of care? I, I pretty much no. I, well, I mean, the potential was always there, but I isolated myself to a small group, you know, a like small community, and it's only when I spread outside that community that I started getting more popular not less you know like well, people like, see it they go look he's helping people i mean that's what like okay if people are getting better you yeah, know you yeah, start it's hard saying, to argue with success <laughs> yeah when people are feeling better and the thing is is word of mouth people are like this guy helped me i no one else figured it out and then this guy went in and he goes run these tests and here's the problem let's work on this right so it's a it's a it's amazing though when people are getting better that you get more blowback for instance 
uh, Tro, Tro and I, my, my partner on the um, Low Carb MD podcast, we started talking about stress and life and alcohol abuse and all these things that were outside of metabolic. But what we were finding is people, when they got their nutrition right, when they stopped, stopped cut out their processed garbage, the yo-yo, the, you know, the ding-dongs and all that kind of stuff, they're like, oh, I'm less stressed. I'm not eating. I'm not drinking as much. Or my mental, my my depression is getting better. And people, these guys are, now we have study after study showing you decrease this, like you were saying, the CRP inflammatory markers, these chronically inflamed brains, you can't focus, right? You get attention deficit. You get all these things. You just go, look, what, what are you eating? What are you doing with your life? You know, we have kids now playing video games all day and eating, you know, cookies and feeling like they have to snack all day, you know, and then they get obese and they get start getting mental illness and, and diabetes and all these things. And when you say it's dietary and they're like, you guys are crazy. You should, actually, we I had a doctor say I should have my license revoked for even discussing that food could affect mood. I was like, go eat a couple of jalapenos. As a matter of fact, I have a guy who just did a one chip challenge. He took one bite of this really spicy chip. His sugar went through like 220. He usually runs like 90. But it was the stress of this hot thing. And he was like, oh, my gosh, I'm dying. He was trying to get water in and everything. And his sugars went crazy on his continuous glucose monitor, you know. But it, yes. it does affect you. You drink too much coffee, you're going to be wired that night and maybe not sleep. Drink too much, you're going to have a hangover the next day. You're going to feel bad. Or you give ki kids cookies and donuts all day and they're wired when they when grandma drops them off at your house and the, the parents are upset. Like To say it has no effect is insane to me. Yeah, so the, the, um, the idea of scrutiny is important bring it on bring it on you know i had a lady come in the office who was uh she was getting chiropractic care and i really hadn't started working with her yet but i was walking her from the front office to the back to get her chiropractic treatment and typically we would uh do some trigger point therapy and then a heat pack really to get a person relaxed and the blood flowing up so they're totally malleable so the chiropractor could do a, a good adjustment and so she was walking back with me for that kind of routine. And uh, I could tell something was wrong. I had only seen her a few times. I said, hey, what's going on today? You know, she was staring at the floor and upset. She goes, oh, it's this weight, Reed. You know, I'm 40 pounds overweight and it's been going on for a couple of years. And, you know, it's really um, and I was going to say, well, hey, let's, you know, me, happy guy, let's do something about it. And there's nothing I could do about it because I'm on this medication for the hives, for black, mm. blotchy skin. So I'm on this medication. So, so there's nothing I could do about it. And I was gonna, I was getting happy. I was like, well, we can. And she goes, and you know, Reed, I'm so frustrated because I went to the doctor the other day for a checkup on it. And he told me that you have your choice, lady. And when she said how frustrated she was with the weight, he said to her, according to her, lady, you can be fat. Or you can have the hives take your pick. Yep. And that sounds, that's, and that's I've not, heard that too before. Not, so now I'm starting to see why she looks so sad. And then she, and I'm still ready to go with, well, we can, you know, and she goes, and you know, I told him that that was very depressing. And he said that he'd be happy to write me a prescription for antidepressants. Antidepressants to accept the fact that you're fat. You know, and because you have to be on this med so you don't have hives. So, so I see the frustration, and I said, I finally got out of my mouth, like, well, hey, so and so, did you ever think of testing to find out why you get the hives? And her head snapped around so hard, Dr. Bry, I, that I thought she wouldn't need her chiropractic adjustment that day. <laughs> it went, what? What do you mean, test why I get the hives? I go, yeah, we can run a test or two and see it, see, not sure, you know, see if we could find. And so long story short, we ran a couple of tests. I sent her home with the test kits. I had them in the office. We also drop ship these test kits to our clients around the country and around the world, actually. So it's very easy to do this kind of lab work. Here, take these, go home and, and get the test done. And when you and, and we have nothing to do with the lab. We're not the lab. We don't make money on the labs. You know, I'm fee for service. You're paying, you pay me for my time and you get the labs at whatever the cost is. As and you mentioned that, and that's important to know. Yeah, that's so, exactly so what we're I not making too. money on the labs. It's just here, this is the data we need to help you. So she got the labs done, and within nine days after, so she met with me on the results. We corrected some dietary things, some environmental things. 
and gave her a, a pattern to to follow, you know, some instructions. Nine days later, she says, Reed, after nine days, I called my doctor and said, I'm not taking this medication anymore. I don't need it. I found out why I get the hives. Wow. And another two weeks later, she goes, Reed, I just can't believe this. It was that easy. You know, my whole life is different. Now I'm in the gym working out to a sweat and I'm taking hot showers. She told me then. I haven't had worked out to a sweater, taken hot showers in two years, because even on the meds, I get the hives when I do that, or I was getting the hives. So now she's working out. She's all these things are better. And she had lost, already started to lose weight. So that changed her life. That changed my life. That was yeah, those I mean, kind of things. over 20 years ago. And I'm going, holy Holy yeah, macro. you start realizing that it's like, holy cow, it's like, why, why is this happening? And so, you know, we're seeing, especially these days, a lot of autoimmune diseases, a lot of thyroid stuff going on. So I have to ask you what, if you say, okay, here's the, of the practitioners you've trained, what is your bread and butter? Where do you go? Oh, when this patient comes in with this complaint, we can really help this patient. Are there things that get you excited that, you know, Funny. okay, like you're having Funny. certain symptoms that you're the person I can help. You know, th thyroid's easy, irritable bowel, and uh, all these sorts of long-term, chronic, degenerative, downward spiraling. As long as, this is key, as long as there's time to heal. So w this is how the correct way to express it. If your downward spiral is so contracted, you need a medical doctor because you don't want a downward spiral if it's going really fast, really down fast, like you just got a tumor, you know, you even notice you have a tumor or something growing out of your head. Yeah, you're going blind in one eye and you got all you, these you know, crazy I mean, stuff. When the downwards, see, because the observations that we make can't be capitalized on. So if we have time, if it's just a long-term chronic thing, then there's time to capitalize on those tests that we would run. We'd like to run them all up front, by the way. So, yeah, five, I'd have every person do five labs. Sometimes we have to stretch it out a little bit. The only difference is money. It's like, what do you, what how, you know, you, we need you to invest. It's much better to just bite the bullet, get all the testing out of the way. Now we've got time to capitalize on all those observations. We can totally customize the DRESS -S program, and it's ongoing. So we do 90-day 90, 90 bite-sized pieces. And then once they're out of the wood, you know, they're, they're, people go, wow, I'm losing weight. Uh, my hair's getting thick. My libido's back. I'm putting on some muscle. i sleeping better. Oh, less or no alcohol or in, in these self-medicating things. And so they're really getting in charge of their life. So then you can get into the predictive markers for uh, chronic, chronic disease that will bite you in the ass later. If you don't watch out, <laughs> hey, what are your what are the five tests that you run? Are they, I mean, are they are you looking so again, at it? It's, well, it, it's hormone, immune digestion, detoxification, energy production, nervous system. That's six things. But but we cover it all with uh, uh, we do a saliva test for all the hormones, a peak into the immune system. We do a urine test for we call it mucosal or primary <clears throat> metabolic wellness. It's digestion and detoxification markers. And we look at uh, the mucosal barrier assessment. We do that on every person. That's a finger stick test. So you, you blood on, you drip it out. So, so you have the saliva, we call it the stress and hormone panel, the metabolic wellness panel, that's uh, saliva and urine. The finger stick blood, that's for uh, the mucosal barrier assessment. Wow. Um, then there's the uh, look at the GI pathogens and microbiome. That's a stool test. So you do that at home too. The only test you have to go get a blood draw for, or you, we have drive-by you know, drive phlebotomists, um, for about 50 bucks, they'll come and do the, your blood draw at home. You don't even have to go to a Yeah, doctor. there's a lot of people are doing that after yeah, COVID yeah, so, lockdowns. People go, just come to my house. Yeah. And that's for the food sensitivities test that we do on every single person because every single person has some. And it's good to get off those foods and, and realize what you can eat. The best thing about that test is it tells you these foods are safe for you. And it's, um, it's a, so those are the five tests. And yeah, they, they cost about a thousand bucks, but we can't help that. I have no control over the lab fees. But that's the data. You're buying your data. Who owns that data? But well, then once you do it, now you know, right? Now you have, a, the you have an idea of what you're dealing with.
Yeah. So you get the data, you get it all explained to you exactly what everything means. Probably it tells you how you got there. This is what people love about it. They say, how come no one else ever did this for me? Well, I don't know. <laughs> That's not how the standard algorithms work. You know, so yeah, we run all this because they're predictive. They're they're going to sort out the metabolic chaos. They're going to give us the healing opportunities. And people are amazed. They're thankful. They're they just I can't tell you how many times I've heard that, you know, how come no one else? This is amazing. This is so helpful. These tests explain why you feel so lousy when the other tests uh, said nothing's wrong with you. So it's it's a great investment. And I'm, I can't help what it costs. Then there's my fees. So they're separate. You pay yeah. me, you know, what I just charge because I need to make a living. And uh, then these lab fees are just separate i i don't make money on the labs do you ever narrow it down and go okay you don't need all five based on what we're seeing here let's just check this this is a low-hanging fruit and for someone who can't afford to have a thousand dollars of testing i mean you you could start with you know whatever their main complaint is so we ask everybody what's your main complaint if i had a magic wand what's the one thing and people usually get identified one or two that if they start saying 10 things we know let's narrow it down if I could be, you know, if so if it's your tiredness, fatigue, or foggy thinking, or whatever, you got aches and pain, whatever it is. Uh, okay, so uh, how often does that bother you? Every day. Okay, how long has it been going on? Five years, three years, you know, sometimes 10 years. It's, it's amazing. What have you tried so far? Oh, everything, the standard medicine. I tried standing on my head in the corner with carrots in my nose. I, you know, what, are, what all these weirdo things and standard things. And okay, so um, why is this important to you? Like, if we, if you, we get rid of that, what's that going to mean to you? Oh, my life's going to improve. I can go dancing with my husband. I can, whatever it is. You know, they need. We need to understand people. So there's a couple other questions about. Um, what would stop you from uh, finishing a program? We have to pick and choose our clients so we know that they're going to be successful. And if they're not going to be successful, we wouldn't take them on. We wouldn't take their money. You know, so we can kind of predict who's going to actually be able to um, follow through and commit to a program. So that's the real answer is we can help anyone who's willing to commit to the program. And in that case, yeah, you'd want to run all the labs. If they, I had a lady once call me who said, Hey, I don't have any money, but you help my friend. Can you help me? <laughs> I said, Let me see if I can point you in the right direction. You know, I want to help everybody. So we happened to get really lucky and run the one right test, and it changed her entire life. And she's able to go get a job. She, you know, she, she'd been in, she'd been in the house five days a week with a pillow over her head with migraines. Two weeks later, after running the lab and talking to me, she never even came in the office. She couldn't afford an office visit. And um, and I just just did that for her and uh, changed her life. She she called me up and says, I'm not having migraines anymore. Okay, there you go. You know, that's how this stuff. Yeah, it's amazing when you see that, when people say my mood's better, my joints don't hurt. I'm like, you know, I can interact better. I get along better with people. All those things where they're evened out, you know, it's a huge deal. Well, that's why we wanted her to run more than one test because that wasn't her, migraines is just the beginning. That was her main complaint. And yeah, we wanted to get rid of that. But what about the future and other things going on? So uh, we want to do a comprehensive intake if possible. So it sounds like you're taking patients the rest of the doctors are trying to get rid of. Or, or the, it, it, well, uh, we, we don't get a lot of referrals from physicians because that's, we're, they, that's a, the competitive aspect. We don't want to compete. We want to work together. When you need medical, get medical. When, when that's not the right backyard, when that's not the right wall to have your ladder on, get your ladder on the other wall. We created the other wall to put your ladder on, and there's steps. And you, you're, the first thing is to run the labs. Then you get the customized protocol. Then you follow the customized protocol with coaching. So we have health coaches that will uh, keep you on track. Yeah, I think that's so critical. And finding out if you're eating a food that's causing you all kinds of trouble, just 
getting rid of it, our body has a remarkable healing capacity. So if your gut microbiome and your gut mucosa, if you have a bunch of leaky gut stuff going on and you're causing all this lipopolysaccharide, you know, has massive inflammation, all this stuff from the breakdown of the gut microbiome. So it's just really a stepwise approach. I mean, you know, like for, for me in Western medicine, the, the, I remember all the time people come in complaining of fatigue and you're like, oh, fatigue. Oh my gosh. Are you depressed? Are you this or that? And then you start realizing how much it could be, you know, lifestyle diet and all these other things where people are just chronically fatigued. They can't think they have a mental fog, you know? And, and so figuring out from a nutrition standpoint, how do we optimize nutrition? Yeah, it, it's remarkable. So there is a pathway for people and we're here to help. And, uh, you know, we, we welcome anyone who's got a chronic or, you know, health problem that they want to get rid of. You want to get rid of it? You know, and so we, we, we so we have a vetting process. We want to make sure you want to get rid of it because once it's gone, you now you got to take responsibility for your life. And there's no there's no magic pill. What do you attribute this big uptake of uh, this big increase in autoimmune disease? Like, is there something that you're seeing? Like, you know, I'm seeing more and more frequently, and I was going to ask you about this too with thyroid. Like, some of their their TSH, free T3, free T4 look okay, but they have a huge anti thyroid antibody. And you're like, oh, this, this is going to be a, a problem to, at some point. Like, what do we do with that person? You know, we, we do our system hidden and then dress. It, it's really simple, the, the concept and the procedure. Uh, but the truth is, the environment's not getting better, it's getting worse. We've cleaned up the water. I mean, I, I again, environmental law, you realize that the Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act that were passed back in the, around 1970 uh, were really important. And uh, they helped a lot with, with putting the clamp down on the government and major polluters. The government was like number one at military and stuff like that. And I love our military, but as I'm just saying, the government... Um, <laughs> Never yeah, mean. there's a lot of ways. I don't want to go stuff. there. Yeah, I don't want to go there. But but so so the environment's gotten worse, and then you throw COVID into it. You know, a hundred million people are walking around with long COVID. A hundred million people, three million people died of COVID. But there's another, you know, ninety-seven million, let's say, who um, are walking around with long COVID. So they got this infection that's affecting their DNA. It affects how. Um, it just there's metabolic chaos trust me in there and so that's part of the um it, it can downward spiral to the gut to you know your emotions to, to all kinds of things every function in your body really and so there's a lot of that going on on top of all the environmental stuff and then you got the v word you know um and, and what is that doing and how how for reals is it and things like that. So there's a lot to, that's yet to be discovered. Yeah. And, I think. You know, and, and like what you're talking about, the HSCRP, I've seen like, usually like less than one, I see people at 26, 28, like, uh Oh, they had one of those things you talked about. Yeah. So there's, there's that, um, the other predictive markers we like are like omega six to three ratio that could, and that could take five years to bring down to a reasonable level. Uh, people eat at restaurants and they're all using bad, seed oils they're using like basically rancid oil to yeah put, it's a huge uh, issue eat. people don't talk about and it can make it taste good that's the worst part yeah <laughs> you know it could be delicious oh i love this it's full of seed oil that's gonna uh change that ratio that's not good for you it's matter of fact it's very very uh detrimental you're gonna get cardiovascular disease if you don't watch out so we can we can actually measure those are the predictive markers There's no symptoms yet that's why you can't get the test done uh you you have to be interested in care and get these predictive markers on top of the five labs that we, we're going to get you out of your jam you know 90 days 180 whatever it is uh lifestyle stuff teach you but then you're going to want well what else can i do how can i make sure i live to be 95 and can still uh dance with my wife or whatever else you feel like doing and so that's that's the tougher one maybe even you know um but it's investment 
in data. Yeah, if you don't look, you don't find it. You got to look. And that that that's a huge thing. I think, you know, I, I really try to minimize my lab draws and try to work on getting the metabolic health right. And if things aren't going the right way, say, okay, let's let, let's take a deep dive. And that's where I think we could work together that way. If I'm not having results with a patient, go, okay, read, figure this person out. Look, they've, they're doing everything right. And they're not having results. Well, I'd love to, Dr. Brian. And uh, since we found out that we're neighbors pretty much, we ought to do that. Yeah, we're right down the street. Yeah, so tell people, first of all, where they can track you down, how they find you on social media, you know, what you've done and all those kind of things. Yeah, if they so, want to take classes from you and all that. Well, the the best thing would go to, uh, you know, what I do, the, the system I create is called Functional Diagnostic Nutrition, FDN. FDN. We're doing around the world now is FDN. There's yeah, FDN, FDN practitioners probably in your neighborhood, wherever you're listening from. So FDNtraining.com, FDNtraining.com slash Best Medicine is the uh, where we'd send you to get a free uh, Dress for Health Success guidebook and that kind of thing. So just go there. It's um, it's FDNtraining.com slash Best Medicine in honor of your uh, podcast and uh, operation you got going on there. <laughs> All right. Great. Great. Just go there. Yeah. And uh, and find out more. Great. And hopefully we get more Western docs working like we all can work together. It's the same thing. I mean, I all the time I'll say, yeah, I was at my chiropractor and, and my patients are like, what? You are you go to a chiropractor? I'm like, yeah, I'm walking straight up and I don't have any back pain. I go once every two months or something. I feel great. And so it's those things where you have to have an open. If it works, if it doesn't work, then I do something else. You figure out what works and what doesn't work. And we all kind of work together and go, your back hurts. Go see this person. They can help you. Or you're having, you know fatigue and anxiety and you're getting hives, go see this guy and, and get the testing done at least instead of being on a drug the rest of your life, you know? And, and so, yeah, being able to find that all the, like you said, it's not one root cause. It's like a constellation of things. Like you can't, you know, I think you said that you can't just look at one star and know where you're at. You have to look at the constellation and understand it, right? Yes. You see them all in wow. context, not just a number on Amazing. paper. I've used that analogy many times. One star doesn't tell you what the constellation is. You need multiple points. Then you can, get your arms around it a little bit. So uh, good on you, Dr. Brian. So track you down. And I have to ask you for Reed Davis, what's life's best medicine? What's your, what, where do you go when things are hard? What motivates you? What gets you out of bed in the morning? What's life's best medicine for you? Well, that, that's, that's a lot of things. I, I start with um, uh, a state of gratitude every day. Uh, you, if you only look at your troubles, that's what you're going to be seeing. If you look at your blessings, and be thankful that you woke up this morning. You know, a million people died last night, and and, and that's the truth. So, I mean, you can check the statistics. You didn't. <laughs> that's a good thing. So you you get up in the morning, be thankful, get into the state of grace, and uh, realize that everything else is external. You know, but uh, but you you're you inside. You know, um, your head or whatever you want to look at it. I'm not my body. I'm not even my mind. You know, my thoughts are just accumulation. My body's an accumulation of everything I've eaten for the last 70 years and done with it and all, all that, those inputs. My mind is just really the result of uh, 70 years of thinking, seeing the thoughts. And I'm not my thoughts either. You know, I, I'm a spirit and I start every day with that or try to. No, nah, that's great advice. I think if more of us woke up and counted our blessings and just take a breath and start out on the right foot and be, uh, you know, get to spend time with you and talk about life and what matters and, you know, really be on that search. And what you've done is you've lived your life in a way where you want to educate yourself so that you could help other people, it sounds like. And, you know, there's no better blessing than that to say, gosh, this lady's not walking around with hives or she's not having to take all these drugs or making her gain weight. And her doctor says, you're going to have to be fat or have hives. It's like, you know, that's like not very good option. So being well, able to help people like and that. like leave yeah. the world a better place than where you started and train people and, you know, use your, you know, this, this brain that, uh, you know, brought you in this, this investigative mode to help other people. And that's awesome. And, and that's why it's so hard for us who are healers to hear about people who plant, you know, they spend their whole life trying to kill other people or try to make their life miserable or pick on people on social media. And you go, gosh, dang it. Like, wow, how, how could you not, like want to uplift people and, and instead of tearing them down all the time. I'm, I'm with you. So is it sometimes when it, it gets noisy, you got to turn the volume down on the outside world, you know, and find a place inside 
that you have peace. And that's my best advice uh, of if nothing else. Yeah, I think that's a low hanging fruit. So people, if you're struggling with with, uh, you know, a lot of health problems, you're fatigued and tired, and you got this mental fog and all these things going on, don't just give up. Don't just take another pill all the time. You know, look, look for people doing functional diagnostic nutrition or people who can like just sit and talk to you about counting your blessings, whatever it might be, you know, and sometimes just thinking about yourself going out for a ride on your bike or motorcycle or just go on the, in the forest and go, okay, what's terrible in life? What's good. What would I change if I could change anything? And that's why, you know, we're doing this podcast because if our healthcare system is in shambles and if we could just, you know, take care of ourselves, then the system won't be bleeding so poor, so much. You know, if we can take care of these problems and not just go in and, you know, like what, what's happening with the Medicare annual exams, it's absolutely horrible medicine, in my opinion. And so you can't be part of that system. So doctors out there struggling, we're the number two suicide rate in the, in the U.S. And so you start looking at this and we're, we're beat down, you know, you're not helping patients, you're not being, um, uh, you're not bringing health. So you're just throwing another pill, throwing another pill, you're part of the system. So step back and take a breath and look at that. Us docs, we put our heads down and swim and we don't look to see where we are. So, you know, let let some of this sink in. Think about the gut microbiome and stress and sleep and alcohol and all these other things that we're, we're, we're talking about. So put this into practice. I know it's hard when you have eight minutes, but if you could just sit down and connect with the patient or, you know, sometimes work through lunch, it's okay. And, and, and really connect and, and make a difference. That patient's going to be healthier and they won't need to see you as frequently. <laughs> and then, so you, you, there's always going to be sick people. So, you know, doing what, what Reed's doing, doing, you know, uh, focusing on these other things that are outside of our comfort zone and learning. And if you don't want to learn, send them to him and get let them get the testing at least say hey doc look we could get rid of these meds if we address these issues so reed thank you so much thanks for joining thank me you, i really Dr. appreciate Brian. it thanks yeah real pleasure out. we'll have to get together we'll have to get together now that we're neighbors for sure yeah absolutely everyone be kind to yourself be kind to others great nuggets of information here and uh just don't give up com and thank you again for listening and, uh, you know, stay the course during the holidays. You got this. Keep fighting on and uh, stay well. Thank you for listening to this episode. We greatly appreciate your support. We would greatly appreciate a positive thumbs up on all of the platforms like uh, iTunes and uh, Spotify or wherever you're listening. And we just thank you for our Patreon supporters. Uh, we greatly appreciate yeah, your help in getting this message out. We think there's a lot of important information. And uh, hopefully this helps you. You know, Have a great day and thank you for listening and thank you for your support.